This week, I'll show you how to focus stack your landscape images to go from this to this. Sometimes you'll want everything in your photograph in focus from front to back. When you're using a really wide angle lens and you get your lens really close to the foreground subject, this can go beyond the capabilities of your camera. And this is when you need to focus stack. When done right, this looks really good and everything in your foreground will have lots of detail as well as everything right up to infinity. This is one of the challenges with landscape photography where you need to get everything from front to back in focus. Due to diffraction, you want to avoid your really small apertures. I don't go anywhere above f16, so f18 and f22 I avoid. Now at f16, when you're shooting with a really wide angle lens and your foreground objects are really close to the camera, you won't get these in focus as well as the infinity point. So this is where you need to focus stack. You basically take one shot where you focus to the infinity point, you'll focus two thirds or halfway into the shot, and then you'll focus on the foreground. There are a few things you need to get right when taking the shot to avoid any headaches later on in the process. Shoot from a tripod. Get your composition and then lock down your tripod. Touch the camera as little as possible to avoid any movement between the shots. Make sure there's nothing that'll bang into it, knock it or move it in any way. Switch to manual mode and dial in the settings you want. This will ensure the exposure will stay the same for all three shots. Then move your focus area to the furthest visible place in your frame. Focus on that point and then take a shot. I like having my camera on a two second delay so the camera will be perfectly still when it takes the photograph. Then move your focus area to the midpoint. Focus on that point and take another shot. And then finally move the focus area to the foreground. Focus once again and take your final shot. If you inadvertently knock your tripod or camera while you're taking these shots, you'll have to start the sequence again. When I've got my shot and I'm satisfied that I've focused in those three points, I'll maybe take another shot or get some other compositions before heading home. Even though there are many different editing programs, I like to use Lightroom and Photoshop. They work really well together and you can transfer files from one to the other. I'll always use Lightroom for cataloging and light editing, and then I'll use Photoshop for more advanced editing techniques. When you open Lightroom, import the images into Lightroom. If you don't know how to do this, click on the eye in the corner. This will take you to my Lightroom workflow. So I've imported the images into Lightroom. What I'm gonna do is make sure that they're all the right ones. So this first one is where I've focused on infinity. So I've focused on the mountain in the background. So you can see that is nice and crisp and clear. If I come to the foreground, it's a little bit fuzzy. The next one along, that sharpens up a little bit. And then the third one, that's when I properly focused on this point. So these are the three images I'm gonna work on. What I'm gonna do is select all three by holding shift and clicking on them then right clicking on them and then edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. Once your computer has Photoshop opened and it's brought the layers in, you can see here there's three layers. Your Photoshop might look a little bit different. All I've done is this panel here normally sits on the left hand side. I've just brought this over to the right hand side. I feel this just makes it easier because I'll bring my mouse to the right hand side to grab a tool, go to the layers, or anything I need to do. All of the tools are on the right hand side and then I'll edit the image here. Anyway, back to editing. As you can see, I've got my three layers here. All I'm gonna do is rename them so I don't get confused as to which layer is what. This top layer is where I focus to infinity. You can see it's a little bit soft in the foreground and as we come through to the background, the rocky outcrop is in focus. So this is infinity focus point and we'll just hide that one and this next one I think I've focused around about this point here so we'll call that middle focus point and we'll hide that and this last one is where I focused on the foreground 
you can see it's nice and sharp here. So I've called that one foreground focus point. Next thing I'm gonna do is align layers. Because if you see, when I click on them, the focus breathing has actually changed the framing just subtly. So what I'm gonna do, select all layers, click on edit, auto align layers. I keep it on auto and then click okay. Once Photoshop has aligned the images, what you wanna do is try using the automated focus stacking option. What you need to do is select all of them again, click on edit, auto blend layers. These two options at the bottom, I normally uncheck those. Seamless tones and colors seems to make some very strange changes to the images sometimes, especially if there's color differences in the image. I make sure stack images is selected and then I click okay. So now Photoshop has blended the images together, you can see it's created masks on each of them. Basically the way that a mask works is that it has a layer over the top, as we can see here. Everything in the mask that's white will be shown up on that layer. Everything that's black in the layer mask won't be shown. So if I just hide the two bottom layers, I'll press Option or Alt and click on the layer and it shows the layer. So you can see all the white bits there correspond to the bits of the images that are shown. And as you can see, Photoshop has stitched the images together. What it thinks is in focus on one layer, on the next layer, and then on the top layer. Now, I've never really got good results with this, so I do it manually, and I'll show you what I mean. On this bottom layer, this is where just the foreground is in focus. However, it's got these strips at the side and the sky in the shot as well. These aren't in focus. If we look at the image close up, you can see where the problems lie. So I'll start at this bottom corner. You can see that's nicely in focus. As I come up this edge, you can see this bit is slowly going out of focus. You've got a really bad blend there. As you go further up, you can see it's really soft here as well. And this is why I like to blend it manually. So I'm gonna undo this process. To focus stack them manually, just make sure that the images are auto aligned and then what we're gonna do is use masks. I make sure that the one that has most of the image in focus is on the top. So my infinity focus point will have everything from this mountain in the background and the clouds behind it, right up to somewhere around this midpoint in the image. Then the middle focus point has everything from that midpoint up to probably about here. And then the foreground as the front of this rock in focus. So I'm gonna start with this top one. This is the one that has most of the image in focus. I'm gonna click down here and create a layer mask. You can see it's created a completely white layer mask. So I see all of this image. If I just hide these two bottom ones, I've got my layer mask selected. Here on my palette, I've got black or white. I'll just show you quickly what a layer mask does, just in case you don't know. If I hold down Option or Alt and click on the mask, you can see it's completely white. If I select my paint tool and I paint a black line across the middle, again hold Option and click, you can see where that black line is on the mask is where it's deleted part of this image. If I was to have the image underneath, you can see it blends together nicely. If, however, the paintbrush is grey, I paint there, you can see it's taken around about 50% of the image away. So layer masks are a really powerful tool. I'll just undo those two bits and start again. So I have this top layer selected. I'm gonna select the middle focus point as well. So what I'm gonna do is zoom in on the image and I'm gonna start getting rid of where it goes out of focus. So if I go to 100%, you can see all of this background is in focus. As I look through the image, I can see that the image starts to lose focus in this sort of area. So what I'm gonna do, make sure my palette is black. So I've got black and white. And this is another little point. If you hit X, see it switches between the two. So when you press X, you can quickly switch between one palette and the other. I want to start rubbing things out. So I'm gonna have black selected in my palette. So now you can see as I paint over this bit, it starts getting more in focus. I'm 
And you can see as I paint it in, it starts getting black on this bit here. So that's what I've painted so far. Don't worry about the changes with the auto align. We're gonna correct these later on. So if we go to 100%, you can see here, it's not very sharp. Got my black palette selected. And as I paint over it, you can see it's bringing up the sharpness. It's almost as if it's bringing the image into focus. So I think I've got all the points, but what I'm gonna do is hold down Option and click on the mask. You can see I've missed a few points. So in pressing Option and clicking on the mask, you can tidy it up. So now I'll click on Option and click on the mask again, and that's covered all of that area. Next. I want to add the foreground bit because down here on the foreground, it starts going out of focus again. It's only subtle, but it does start dropping focus. So again, on this middle focus point, I'm gonna drop another mask. It's a white mask so I can see all of that image. I'll make sure the mask is selected. I'll make sure black is selected on the palette. And again, I'll start painting in this area. I'll zoom into 100% so you can see it changing the focus. So it's just sharpening it up even more. What you'll find is sometimes you'll start painting in a bit that'll start to get fuzzy. So this bit here is just dropping out of focus in this front image. What I'm gonna do is on this middle focus point mask, I'm gonna switch the palette back around and start painting white back into this image. And that's the great thing with masks. When you flip between white and black, I can delete part of an image and then I'll click to white and then I'll bring that part of the image back. So now the image looks really good. It's focused from front to back. There's nothing that's out of focus. You can see the foreground is all in focus, the sand and the rocks. And as we come back, mid-ground is in focus, as is the mountain in the background. So that looks good to me. So there's a few things that I need to do. I want to get rid of the shadow from my tripod, and also I need to crop in to get rid of this edge here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is crop in. So I'll click on my crop tool. The great thing with Photoshop is it finds edges. So it's just finding these closer edges. I'll double click on it and that'll crop in. The last thing I want to do is get rid of my tripod shadow. So I'm going to use the spot healing brush tool. There we go. And then I'll just tidy that up. Once you're happy with your image, save it and then go back to Lightroom. Once the new image is loaded back into Lightroom, you'll notice it that it's a TIFF file as opposed to a RAW file. So those are the Sony RAW files and this is the stacked TIFF file. You can see that shadow's gone and it's cropped in a little bit. Everything's in focus from this foreground right through to the background. All you wanna do now is edit the image as normal. So if we look at the images side by side, the image on the left is a non-stacked image. The image on the right is a stacked image. If we zoom in on the foreground, you can see it's quite soft in the single image. Whereas in the stacked image, it's perfectly in focus. And that's about it. Focus stacking is a great tool to have in your arsenal, and it's a fairly straightforward technique. If you find yourself wanting to take a shot where you're going beyond the focal distance of your camera, this is the technique to use. Just remember, once you've found your composition, get your camera on your tripod, Focus in infinity, the midpoint, and the foreground. So you'll end up with three shots that you can edit later. As always, if you like what you see, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, give me a thumbs down. And for weekly tutorials, hints and tips in photography and videography, subscribe and turn on notifications. I'll see you next time.